Hello and welcome to Chindu.org. In this video, we are going to look at one of the most game changing and radical new method in Excel, the dynamic array functions. So in this video, we will look at filter unique sort by sort sequence and rand array functions, understand how they are different from the normal Excel functions that we have been using all this while and why they are relevant for simplifying and modernizing your data analysis work. Let's get into the Excel workbook. Just a quick note, these new functions are only available in Office 365 and they are being rolled out in incremental manner. So not everybody who is using 365 Excel will have them but eventually by the end of this year almost everybody who is using office 365 will have access to these functions in a way they are similar to the x lookup and x match functions that were launched a while ago these are new functions new way of looking at data and they provide a different way of dealing with it for the sake of uh, our analysis examples i have already set up a sample data here you can download this file from the video description below. So here we have some fictional made up employee data with 100 employees. Now if I want to calculate the total salary or average rating for the entire team or what is the average age or one of those things we could use our traditional excel formulas like sum of uh, data salary and then we can calculate that. So that will come up with some number like uh, 7.6 million or whatever but if i want to for example extract all the employees that are reporting to ian and list them out here there is no simple formula we would have to come up with some weird concoction of array formulas in earlier versions of excel so this is where the new functions will help us there are six dynamic array functions that are available as of now but eventually microsoft may launch new functions as well so these are filter, unique, sort, sort by, sequence, and rand array. We'll go through them one at a time. Let's go with filter. As the name suggests, filter is for filtering a list of data. So we can use filters to filter out everybody who is reporting to Ian by simply saying filter data that is the table that we want to filter and then what we want to filter is manager should be Ian. So we will say data manager is equal to Ian. And then that's it. When you press enter, Excel will now generate a dynamic array. So this is unlike the normal functions that we write. A normal formula that you write will only have a result that occupy a single cell. Whereas a dynamic array function will take the result in this cell and it'll automatically spill it down or sideways or both depending on how big your data is. So these are all the people that report to Ian. As you could see the last column Ian uh, is a manager is just Ian and all these people are listed. Let's observe this formula again. What filter formula does is filter it will take an input data it could be a range of cells it could be a single column it could be multiple columns and then it will take a condition column now this condition you can think of this as a boolean condition so it will be true or false so the manager is equal to en would be true and then it will give all those rows where that is true what if i want to go and elaborate this a bit more for example i want to report i want to find out all the people that are making more than eighty thousand dollars and still report to en so we could use filter data and this time let's just show the name so we'll say data name i want only the name column where data manager is equal to ian but now we have an extra condition which is salary has to be more than eighty thousand. so when you have multiple conditions you would need to put this in brackets and then multiply them star to multiply so that means it is both ian as well as salary has to be more than eighty thousand. and then we will say data salary greater than 80,000 and then we close the bracket and it will give you a bunch of smaller names that are reporting to Ian. 
and making more than 80. For example, Denison Cross White is here. It's $90,700, obviously more. Villain Oculate but uh, then comes madeline upcourt so brain boys is not listed because they are making less than eighty thousand dollars right so this is how the dynamic array functions work they return a range of cells rather than a single cell to identify the dynamic array range when you select any cell excel will show a blue color boundary around all of them with kind of a little bit of shadow around them saying that this is all a result of a dynamic array and when you select this cell there is really nothing there the cell is considered to be empty there is no formula here you can see this is actually grayed out the if you want to edit the formula you must go to the top left cell and edit it there so from here you can change this to for example from en i can switch this to ram and now i'm looking at people who are reporting to ram okay Obviously, where we are saying equal to in double quotes EN, I can parameterize this as well. For example, for this thing where we are putting EN in double quotes, I can write the name uh, reporting to and then type the words Fred here and then link that in the formula. So where it says equal to, we'll simply say that will be that. You don't have to really make an absolute reference. You can just leave it as a relative reference. But of course, best practice suggests that you may want to have an absolute reference. And it will, all of these people are reporting to Fred. We can go and kind of double check by looking at uh, Curtis Advani he is going to be listed in the, obviously we have to look at more than 80,000 as well. So this is Chess Bonnell. 88,000 and reporting to Fred and that person would be listed here. So this is how the filter function works. Let's go and take a look at how the unique function works. This is very simple. What unique does is it will extract a list of unique items. Uh, so it will remove the duplicates and give one row per item. So we can say, give me a list of all the departments. So we will say data department and this will give you one row per department. So this is unique function. You can use it on a single column. You can combine manager and department as well. For example, you can say data, uh, give me, sorry, unique, give me all the combinations of department and manager. So to do that, we will simply say data department ampersand uh, and space data manager. So this will give you a combination of all the people and departments there uh, there is um, there is somebody reporting to them in that department okay so this is how the unique function works both filter unique and even the sort function they they can be used on rows or columns so that's where those extra parameters will help you can use it by column uh, traditionally business data happens to be in rows so we don't normally use it uh, and uh, this is uh, that now let's uh, take a look at the next one which is sort function what sort does is it obviously sorts the list so for example we can take um, a list of unique departments unique data department and then sort them in alphabetical order so same departments but now they are arranged in a to z order so we can sort something if you don't specify anything that data will be sorted you can also sort uh, data by a specific column so for example we can say sort data take your entire data and then sort it by salary salary happens to be sixth column here so I can say sort um, data by sixth column and the descending order minus one will be descending order and then this is all of our 100 employees arranged in the most salary to least salary okay so this is sort what if I want to sort something based on something else where would that come in handy for example i want to sort all my employees so sort data uh, i want to sort all my employees by department and within each department by salary so in that case you cannot use sort you have to use sort by that's the next function what sort by does is it will take a data and then you can specify multiple uh, Priority, so you can say department in ascending order, salary in descending order. So we will say data department in ascending order, data salary 
in descending order. This will take the same data. Now it will adjust in the A to Z order. So we will first see everybody in the finance department in their salary order. And then we will go to HR department and then we will see those people procurement and then those salaries. So that is sort by. So those are the first four functions, uh, filter, unique, sort, and sort by. And those are the really the crux of uh, new dynamic array functions. But there are two other functions that are available. These are used so that you can creatively mix and do some interesting things with your information. For example, the next one is sequence. What sequence does is it simply generates a range of numbers. You can use these numbers in conjunction with the either filter or unique or any other formulas to make something interesting. For example, if I say sequence 10, I'll get a range of 10 numbers going this way. I can use sequence to make a two dimensional array as well. I can say sequence five comma three, and then this will give me a range of 15 numbers in three columns and five rows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, like this. You might be thinking, where would I use this? For example, one simple way is, if I just want to sort my employees by salary and then just get the top 10 employees, I can use sequence to do that. So for example, we would do, uh, eventually the last operation is filter. We will go one, one step at a time, sort data by sixth column, okay? And then minus one. So this will give me all the employees and we just want only the first 10 of these. So what we will do is we will apply a filter condition on this filter filter that array by uh, looking at the row number and giving only the first 10 rows. So because row number is really not part of this data, we will generate it. So we will say sequence 100 because there's 100 employees. And then that will give me a list of 100 numbers. And then what we will say is less than equal to 10. So that would simply stop at 10. So this will essentially give me the same data, but it will now have the employees in first 10 employees based on the salary. So this is how you can use sequence in a creative manner inside one of the other functions. Let's go and take a look at the rand array function. What rand array does is, as, as the name suggests, it will make a bunch of random numbers. So if I say rand array 10, I'll get 10 random numbers. These are usually random fractions and they'll come up with that. You can also use a rand array to generate um, an integer value as well. So we can say 10, I want 10 random numbers between 1 and 100 and they should be integers. I'll get 10 random numbers. Again, you might be thinking, where would I use these random functions? One obvious uh, use case is to do simulations or business modeling, but a more uh, immediate use is to shuffle uh, or generate a sample of data from larger list. So for example, we can generate uh, a, we can take uh, our employees and shuffle them. So to do this, all we have to do is take uh, data and sort it, sort data, sort by data, sorry, sort by data. And then the array would be rand array of 100. And what this does is it takes our employees and then it simply shuffles them because it is sorting them based on a random number. And that random number changes every time you do something. So this is giving those names. But if you go and recalculate, uh, calculate now, it will give you different listing. So this is how you can sort by and then see shuffled in a list. If you want to just see the 10 top 10 items in this, you would have to do the same trick as earlier, which is to use an extra filter on top with the sequence condition thrown as well, so that you can see the first 10 rows of these employees or first five. So it's like a sample of employees. So this is in a nutshell, how these new dynamic array functions work. They are a true game changer. Now I will conclude this with one extra tip, which is let us say you have generated something like this list of departments and you want to refer to that in your formulas elsewhere. For example, you want to count how many departments are there. How do you do that? Well, one simple way is you can simply use a count formula to count, and then you can refer to the very first cell and then add a hash symbol at the end, hashtag, 
what this does is it automatically finds out where the dynamic array ends and it will give that entire range. So it's not fixed to five. If your data were to change and there is a sixth department added, it will automatically grow. So this will, uh, sorry, count will only count numbers. We will use count A to count text values. And that's the number five. I will fill up some color there so we can spot this five. And now if I go here and change this to uh, accounting, a new department really, uh, this would add up accounting on the top and it will change this number as well. So this is how those dynamic array functions work. Just a quick reminder, these are available in Office 365 uh, on monthly channel and, and uh, if you are on a semi-annual or annual channel, then you will eventually get them whenever Microsoft rolls these features out uh, after completely testing. But most people who are using Excel uh, can can access these nowadays. So I thought I'll make a video explaining how these work. Go ahead and download the sample file from the video description so that you can enjoy these dynamic array functions as well. Thanks. Bye-bye.